Yes, TCU won last night again. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if you didn't watch the game, you missed a really good game. It was another one of these where they were like 18 points behind at the end of the half. Man, they came back like gangbusters. <laughs> it really was a good game. Okay, Buzz, you're going to make uh, announce our guest today. Well, we're very pleased this morning to have Monique Scraper with us. She is the, as you can see, the executive director of the Pathways Adult Learning Center here in Tulsa. Uh, Monique became involved, I believe, close to 18 years ago, initially with a concern and interest in. Uh, children and adults with intellectual limitations and disabilities has uh, maintained that interest for many years and uh, moved from Oklahoma City where she was involved with other nonprofit organizations to take over as executive director of Pathways. And we are really honored to have her here today and look forward to your comments. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. First off, thank you so much for the invitation to come and share about Pathways. Um, Pathways Adult Learning Center is my heart, and so I just I love the opportunity to tell more people uh, about what it is that we do and about our students and families. And uh, it's surprising to me how. Still, there's so many people that don't know that we exist. Um, so thank you for having me. Um, like Buzz said, my name is Monique Scraper. Um, for me, I hadn't been um, really involved in this population, uh, or I hadn't really met anybody with disabilities until I was uh, at my first job at 16 and a pretzel shop that hired um, some peers of mine that had Down syndrome and autism. And, and that was really my first introduction to this population. And I fell so hard in love with these friends as I was working alongside them and supervising them. And I fell in love with their families and uh, started volunteering at camps and organizations that serve this population and and then I, I grew up with them and uh, approaching high school graduation I saw that there's really kind of like this scary cliff that um, quickly <laughs> approaches for these families of um, what on earth happens to my child after high school because, um, you know, throughout childhood and, and high school, they've got full days every day. They've got programs and after, after school services. And then um, high school graduation comes. And if they don't got a plan in place, um, their, their child often is just sitting at home alone um, in front of the TV for years, for decades. Too often that happens. Um, there's, uh, there's just something very special, I think, about this, this population that, to me, reminds me um, just so much of, of who Jesus is and um, the love that he has for people. And um, so they're, these students are just incredible. They're easy to love. And uh, so that's how I got involved. And uh, I realized that from volunteering at these organizations that, hey, this is maybe something I could do for um, my life, for work. And uh, so it got me into the nonprofit world in Oklahoma City. And eventually, uh, my husband was deployed in Ukraine, and I surprised him with a move to Tulsa. <laughs> Uh, while he was away because Pathways Adult Learning Center popped up and it was my dream job and um, man the the board at the time took a chance on me and I'm so glad that they did because um, it brought me here and I've been at Pathways with Pathways for six years now and uh, I, I can't wait to tell you more about them so enough about me 
uh, Pathways Adult Learning Center. So we began, um, well, we are currently at Kirk of the Hills Church. That's where we began as a ministry. And the, the Kirk, just down the street and around the corner, um, they had a weekend ministry, special needs ministry. They also have like a once or twice a month social club that serves this population, their families. And um, they had kind of a younger crowd and, and they were starting to graduate high school. And so this small group of families came to the leaders of this ministry and they were just like, do you know of any program that exists that could serve my son, my daughter, um, after high school, like during the week, um, there, we need something more. And um, there's a, a few employment agencies in the area that serve this population. Uh, the reality is that employment is not for everyone and certainly not full-time employment is not for everyone. And so they needed some more options um, to serve these families. So these parents asked that question. The answer to that question was no, there's, there's nothing really um, to fill that need, that gap. And these kind people at the church, um, it was the Community of Friends Ministry, uh, the, the Crystal and Barry Fulda spearheaded this. They decided, you know what, this seems like something that would be worth investing some resources in to explore. And uh, they traveled the country looking at um, similar programs um, in various states and, and learned from them uh, what to do and what not to do when trying to form a new organization like this. And um, they started Pathways um, in 2009. And they started it as a ministry of the church um, it operated part-time, 12 hours a week, starting with just those seven families. And um, man, it, it, was, it was something that was so needed that it just grew and grew, mostly from word of mouth. Um, and coming up on 2014, 2015, there had been so much growth that they made the decision to uh, separate from the church, become their own 501c3 nonprofit organization um, rather than a ministry of the church. So we're completely separate, but we are still partners with the Kirk. Uh, we lease their space. Um, they provide um, support and volunteers and, and things like that. And today uh, we operate a full-time program, uh, 40 hours a week, year round. Um, and we serve 90 students uh, with intellectual and developmental disabilities and, uh, and their families. Um, and so we do this with a program that operates uh, 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. We take a few, three or four weeks off a year. The students have off for break. The, the staff are training and preparing curriculum and, and um, that kind of thing. But uh, we also, started recent in recent years a virtual component so um, out of necessity at first during the pandemic um, we transitioned completely virtual um, because our students are vulnerable um, and it was such a powerful program we have a great staff that that really turned it around and created something really special um, for these students that allowed them to engage and allowed us to do the same kind of things that we do in person that we decided uh, a year or so ago to make that virtual program permanent. So now we do both in person and online classes and we serve students now through the online classes uh, across the country and as far away as South Korea. So it's really, really grown. There's so much potential, I think, um, with our virtual classes because, because it's not unique to Tulsa that there's just not enough meaningful opportunities for these adults to fill their days. Um, it, it's, it's something that you'll find across the country and especially 
in um, more rural areas, there's far, far fewer opportunities. And so this virtual program has the potential to, to serve this really un, un, underserved um, population in those areas. So that's one thing we're really working on right now is, is getting the word out about the virtual component just nationwide. Um, so uh, a little bit about our students. Um, we serve adults um, ages 18 to um, our oldest is in their late 60s um, and everything in between. We don't have an age cap um, and we also open up our classes to students as young as 16 in the summer. That way if they're still going to high school and they're worrying about what comes next after high school, they can come try us out for a summer see if it's a good fit, and then they know that they've got a plan um, after high school. Um, our students, uh, the, the two biggest groups of students that we serve are students that have Down syndrome and um, our autistic students. But we serve students with cerebral palsy, we serve students that are blind or partially blind, um, a, a really wide, wide um, variety of disabilities are represented uh, among our students. And, um, and our students are so, so different from person to person as well. Um, each student comes with um, just completely different backgrounds, experiences, talents, and strengths. Um, so it makes, um, it makes for a very uh, lively, fun group of, of students. Um, we've got three in-person classrooms uh, right now and then we consider our virtual classroom our fourth classroom um, and so we group our students as best we can so that we could meet their needs with the curriculum and, um, and help them be successful and um, so I usually try to bring a student or a parent with me to presentations so you can hear directly from them. Um, I wasn't able to do that this morning, but I do have a video um, that I'd like to show you before I start getting into the details about what we do um, because it'll provide you just a, a glimpse inside the classroom and you'll get to hear from a parent about you know, what it's done for, for them in their life. So let me just pull that up just a minute. Pathways provides so many things from social skills, life skills, independent skills such as cooking, doing laundry, knowing how to have a budget, working with money, reading skills, working up to what does a job application look like, how to be safe in the community, how to be safe at home, safe while cooking. It's not a program that is just cookie cutter, it's truly individualized to our students. We've been very fortunate because life with Emily has just been one great big adventure. It wasn't until she started getting older that I started going, ah, what, what is involved after this? What does life look like after high school for her? That's exactly where Pathways came in and has blessed us beyond belief. Emily really feels at home here and we feel comfortable here. It has taken a burden off our shoulders that she has somewhere to come each day to develop friendships and continue her life skills. We give them that chance to be able to interact with, with others and be able to show the gifts that God has given them. We're working on things the students want to learn, they're invested in it, they're interested in it, but also we are giving the parents the opportunity for us to be able to help them and reinforce things that they've been working on at home. So we're all working together for the, the best opportunity for our students. We work with them on nutrition by teaching them how to cook healthy meals that they can recreate at home, showing how fitness and 
being healthy is related to their emotions. So we're working on, on you know, the spiritual aspect, their, their mind. Uh, we work on Bible study and worship every day. We really want to help them to build and, and grow their relationship with God and to be able to show the love of Christ to others in everything that they do. We work on independent living skills and our students, they may never live outside of their parents' home, but we do want them to be able to be contributing to the things at home and just being able to give them the opportunity to be able to take care of themselves more and be more independent. We really just want to enhance the quality of life for our students with an abundance of meaningful activities throughout the week. Pathways is a continuing education program, but it's also a relationship program. It's giving them the opportunity to learn and, and grow those relationships and build friendships in a way that it's just a beautiful thing to watch. It, it's, it's wonderful to see it every day. The friendships are so very important to her. and. Just like you and I want to belong somewhere, I feel like that's very important for these kids to have bonds and friendships just like we do. We crave interaction with people. She gets to go out into the community and volunteer, and she is so proud of herself. She just gets giddy about it, and she realizes that she's helping someone else. And we all like that as human beings, that we have made an impact on the world. We volunteer a lot. Our students love to serve. We take our choir out. They go sing or play games or uh, make crafts with some of the residents at different assisted living organizations. We go to the food bank, so we're helping those people that, that are struggling with you know, food security. Our students are learning about that and learning how to help. Each week they work on measurement, they're weighing produce or vegetables, they're sorting. Every skill that we're teaching at Pathways, we're also showing the real world application of it. It has been really a treasure to watch her become independent at home, want to help with meals. And when meals are over, she's the first one to jump up and put her dishes away. And that has all happened through her life skills, her development here at Pathways. They have the same desires. They want the same experiences that everyone else has. They want a meaningful program that's not just putting them in front of a TV. I think we're always looking ahead at Pathways. What we're doing today directly influences what we're planning for tomorrow. There's just such a need for this type of program for adults with disabilities that we want to share that and make that opportunity possible for as many students as we can. It hurts my heart to think about what our students would be doing without a place like Pathways where I just see them thrive in this environment every day. They know that we are all here loving them and supporting them in any endeavor that they want to try and giving them the chance to learn new things and make mistakes and learn from that in a place where it's a safe place for them. When I wake her up and go, come on, we gotta go to school, she always has a smile on her face and getting her lunch prepared and she's ready to go and ready to be here and learn. That makes a parent happy to know that she has a place to go, that she can shine and be herself and, and love on others. Because of our supporters, Pathway students get to fill their days in a meaningful way. You too can help foster a sense of belonging for adults with intellectual disabilities in our community. From volunteering in the classroom to becoming a mentor for a student. And you can donate. Donations provide resources to help students live happier, healthier, and more enriching lives. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Can you hear me? There we go. I love I love showing the video because it's it's different from just listening to me talk about our students and actually seeing them um, enjoying the program. Uh, something very special. 
Okay, um, so Pathways, we, um, we are a program that, that helps enhance the quality of life for these students and for the families. And uh, we do it with a, a unique program, a Christian program. Uh, we like to say we're helping students um, live happier, healthier, more enriching lives. We're serving the mind, body, body and spirit. Um, our program, um, some, uh, it, a couple of founders have said to me recently uh, that they're just amazed at uh, how, how Pathways has evolved over the years, um, that, that it's just, it's grown into something, evolved into something so much more than they had ever anticipated when they were forming this program. And it's, it just shows you, you know, how God has this plan uh, that's so much bigger um, than, than our own plan sometimes. And uh, to, watch, to watch this grow and evolve is, is something very special. Uh, and clearly demonstrates that there's um, a real need in the community. Um, the faith-based aspect of our program is something that is really, really important to these families. Um, it was important to them uh, when, they, when they were building this program that our program be a Christian program. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, well, there's some research out there that, that has um, asked these individuals and their families across the country um, about their priorities and what they want for their own life. And um, more often than not, these individuals are saying, you know, we want to be a part of the faith community. We want this to be a big part of our lives. That's important to us. And then the reality is that um, many churches, uh, many churches don't have um, a special needs ministry. And um, sometimes uh, that can be a little difficult for families because to feel like they really belong because um, our students, for example, um, they have like a, a developmental level of understanding between like pre-K and third grade on average. And so joining, you know, the big service with the adults isn't exactly appropriate and, and easy for them to understand and engage with. But going to, you know, a, a third grade Sunday school classroom is also not exactly a good fit and not appropriate for these students. And so often these families are trying to come to church and because the student's not able to engage with the big service, um, they get fidgety, um, they might make some noises, they might be pacing, and these families feel like they're distracting um, the congregation. They feel like they're um, a burden on the congregation, and a lot of times these families end up uh, uh, not going to church anymore. Um, and so the, the gap, the difference between what percentage of, of these individuals and these families are going to church versus how many really want to be a part of a church is a pretty big gap. And, um, and so with this program, um, we wanted it to be a Christian program. We wanted it to be faith-based because of that importance, because it, really it's the core of everything that we do. Um, and it provides these students with worship and Bible study and prayer time and fellowship every day um, at their level of understanding and um, provides um, fellowship for the families as well to connect with other families and so that's that's something that's really special and really 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 important um, why we exist so we we help um, assist each individual student to achieve their maximum potential and that's a benchmark that is continually moving um, because our students are so often underestimated by the world and 
and we see that every day. It, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit that um, so many families, when they first come to Pathways, tell a similar story of, of their experience of like um, their K through 12 experience where teachers, um, the schools told them that their students learned as much as they can learn. They've gone as far as they can go. They have significant limitations. They may never be able to actually read or something like that. And so these families often feel a little bit discouraged, you know, and um, often are maybe not looking for the academic side necessarily of what we do at Pathways, but just looking for a safe place for their students to be able to be themselves, a place for them to socialize with others, um, have relationships, and be able to learn about and praise God every day, and that's it. And then our students come to Pathways, and we see so much growth so often um, that it's, it's really surprising to, to the families and really cool um, to, to watch. We have a student named uh, Terry, and she's an older, older student. Um, in her 50s and she after high school there was just a there's a huge gap where she did not do very much um, and so she had experienced um, regression um, from from what she learned in school her social skills um, her speaking skills and um, and so when they found pathways they came and, and terry she's so sweet she said, you know, her goal for herself is she wants to learn to read, and she's very, very committed to this goal. And uh, so we've been working with her on that, and she's making progress, progress that, that, that they didn't think was possible in that, in that area. And it really is just never too late, you know, um, to learn, and we see that pretty often with our, our students. Um, so our program uh, focuses on these five main areas. Um, so our continuing education, of course, we have uh, math, reading, science, geography, current events, all kinds of, of subjects that we incorporate into our weekly curriculum. Um, math and reading is um, our very core subjects we feel like are building blocks for their life skills and what they need in their life at this point in their life and so every year we do annual um, assessments in the areas of math and reading um, and also their own life skills goals um, because we want to continue to adjust our curriculum to to meet their needs um, and I'll also talk a little bit more in a bit about um, we, uh, our mentor program, which provides one-on-one -on -one, um, training and support and tutoring for these students. So we um, develop individualized curriculum as well at their exact level that uh, really helps move the needle for them. Um, life skills training is maybe one of the most important things that we do because um, it helps our students, it helps our families when our students can be more independent at home, independent in their life. Um, and life skills, we include social skills in that as well because when you ask our students what their, their own goals are for their lives, um, everyone says relationships. You know, I want more, I want deeper relationships with friends and um, and there's some aspects of, of uh, certain disabilities that can make those, those social, reading social cues and responding to um, social interactions a little bit more difficult for some students, but they want those relationships so badly. So, so the social side is really important. Um, we volunteer in the community each week, like you heard in the video. Um, I'll talk about that more in a bit. And, and fitness, health and fitness is really important, as well as the spiritual growth side. We're also um, a member of the Oklahoma A Plus Arts Institute, which 
just means that we incorporate the arts into all of our subjects. Um, we develop our own curriculum, and it's uh, surprising that there's, that there's not um, more curriculum out there available to purchase that would fit this population that is geared toward adult lives, but at a pre-K through third grade level. There's not a whole lot out there, so what we do a lot of times is we take some established curriculum and we'll adapt it to our students and their needs and where they're at in, the, in their life. So it's not childish, um, but it meets their needs. Um, and so Oklahoma A Plus helps us to engage our students um, and engage their curiosity. And um, because we use things like um, their, we speak to their multiple um, intelligences, um, our students have multiple learning pathways, so um, one student isn't smarter than another student per se. Um, one student might be um, really musically inclined, and so that's, we call that music smart, and another student might be really nature inclined or mathematically inclined or whatever, and so we try to incorporate a lot of different ways to engage with our curriculum um, because we have our students as adults and we have them long term. So they're not graduating from our program one day. Um, we have them for as long as they need us, as long as their families need us. So we have to have really engaging, fun, different curriculum uh, week to week, year to year. So we work hard to do that. Um, so for continuing education, um, sometimes people ask me like about current events for example but i think current events is so important for our students because we want our students to be to feel like they're a part of the community they're a part of the conversation when people are talking about something big going on in the world we want them not to be afraid because they don't understand what's going on um, we want them to be able to be a part of that conversation um, we also go on field trips to help support their learning. Um, some field trips are just plain fun. Um, like I said, I, we want them to be a part of the community, so we want them to experience the gathering place in Tulsa. They shouldn't be left out from, from that experience. Um, we want them to be able to go bowling with their friends because that's just that's a typical experience that we've all had. Um, that, that we want our students to be able to do as well. But we also take them to the grocery store, for example, um, so they can practice those skills of building um, a grocery list from their meal plans or a recipe and, and going through the motions and using money to make the purchases and, and seeing how all of that works so that they can do that in their own lives. Um, and then we do some fun stuff like uh, Lego robots um, as well, and um, science is so, so fun because um, it really, really sparks their curiosity. And so often our students um, come from a place where people have done everything for them. You know, we'll open their soda for them, we'll answer a question for them, and um, it's, it's coming from great intentions. People want to make their lives as easy as possible. Um, but it kind of, you know, they kind of feel disengaged, I think, sometimes from their own life. And so we try to encourage them um, and get them involved and get them curious and active and asking questions and not afraid to raise their hand and maybe have a wrong answer. Um, so we try to create a safe space for that. Um, life skills. Um, it covers everything from emotions to um, cooking classes. We have a few times a week. We make lunch together. We make a breakfast together. We make a snack together. And it's um, healthier meals. It's easy things that they can replicate at home. Um, and we talk about health and safety, all kinds of good stuff with life skills training that um, some of our students uh, will eventually go and live in like a sort of group home or a DLS home situation one day when, they're, when their parents pass on. Or they might go and live with um, a sibling or another relative or something like that. And so we want to help give them the skills that will make that transition a little bit smoother, a little bit easier for them. 
uh, volunteering in the community. We love, love, love this. Um, we go to the regional food bank. We have just started volunteering with Meals on Wheels. Um, the assisted living facilities is a really great partnership. We hope to um, start back up real soon. We took a break over the pandemic. And once they start allowing volunteers again, we look forward to that because it's, it's so powerful to see them building these relationships with the residents. Um, physical fitness is something that we do every day. We incorporate movement. Um, we have specific fitness time and fitness games and stuff like that, but we try to also incorporate movement into like a math class or something so that so our students are um, getting up and moving around because these, um, these students often tend to lead a, a more sedentary lifestyle and um, have a lot of health um, issues that come along with their disabilities. And so um, we try to help and support them and keep them healthy and moving um, as much as possible. Um, and so we have Special Olympics teams, of course. We, um, have a track team, a swim team, and a golf team. And uh, this year we've been swimming three times a week at Miller Swim School, and it's so popular. The students just love, love swimming time. Um, and the spiritual growth component. So every day, twice a day, we've got Bible study, we've got a bit of worship, and we've got prayer time. Um, but really, uh, the Lord is incorporated into everything that we do and everything that we talk about we can look back at what we're learning in bible study and um, relate it to the wonders of nature <laughs> and um, so it's really really special we have a, a choir as well that will perform in the community we also lead um, a worship time for a very large women's uh, bible study group um, each month, um, but it's a very special part of what we do. We do not require um, our students to, and families to be of the faith when they enroll into our program. Um, so we do serve students that are not yet believers or they belong to another faith group. Um, we don't require that they participate actively into these things, but by being here, um, by agreeing to be a part of the program, they're saying we're comfortable in this environment, and it gives us a chance still to, to share it with them, you know, so. Um, some challenges that we face. Um, growing demand for services. This past year, we've seen um, an unprecedented 30% growth in um, enrollment. Um, and so each year, it's like we're doing what we can. Um, space in the church is also an issue for us. So we get more and more creative. We've been taking up more and more space, but there's only so much space. Um, but we get creative in our use of space. Um, we've been hiring more and more teachers. This year we just added two more teachers. We have a total staff of 18, and 11 of those are teachers. Um, because we want our classrooms uh, to have a really small ratio for, for an intimate classroom environment. Um, but that growth in demand, it has us with a waiting list right now where um, we no longer have space for full-time enrollment, which um, our students and families can choose to enroll in as few as four hours a week or as much as full-time, 40 hours a week. Um, that way, um, some of our students work part-time and come to Pathways part-time. It just fits whatever that family's needs are. Um, breaking down stigma. Uh, there's so many people that just haven't been exposed to this population, and sometimes, you know, it's scary when you haven't been exposed to something, and, um, and so we try to educate the community about this population and what they're like and what their needs are and, what, and the families and, and create opportunities for our students to go out into the community and be seen and to be known and to bring the community into our program, to volunteer with them, um, to develop relationships with them. And, um, and we also have a, a growing need for community support. 
uh, financial, of course, um, to help us support this growing enrollment and um, needs, but also volunteers and uh, mentors. And so we utilize a lot of volunteers in our program. Um, one special, special thing that we do is a mentorship program. So we match volunteers one-on-one -on -one with um, individual students. They develop a really special bond and they work on math reading and that student's particular life skills goals. We provide the training to the volunteers, we provide the curriculum, and they meet about once a week, most weeks, um, for 30 minutes to an hour. And um, it's really, really powerful because we see that the students that have mentors are more likely to experience growth than our students who are not yet matched with a mentor. That makes sense. Um, they're getting that individualized attention week after week. And so our goal is to match all of our students one day. Um, right now we have 38 students out of 90 students matched which is great, but our students just, they long for a mentor, they pray for a mentor daily. And so we're working really hard to recruit those volunteers. Um, it feels like kind of a bigger commitment, uh, you know, to have a weekly hour volunteer commitment. And it's also, um, again, people that don't have an education background sometimes feel nervous. People who haven't been exposed to this population sometimes feel nervous, but um, we provide the tools that you need and we really help you make a connection with that student and feel comfortable and, um, and all of that. So mentorship program is a really powerful volunteer opportunity that we have. Um, we also do uh, classroom volunteers. Um, to help support the classroom, the teachers, help engage um, certain students with the curriculum and the lessons, field trip, chaperones, um, event volunteers. We just had this really big community carnival. We have things like um, in December, we have a luncheon where we serve our students and our families with a meal, and it takes a lot of volunteers to prepare that meal and to serve that meal. Um, and so uh, we also have a need for volunteers to come and um, be like a guest speaker, lead a Bible study, or um, teach their passion. If your passion's gardening, or if you're a dentist and want to come share about dental hygiene with our students, we can utilize all kinds of volunteers. Our students just love, love meeting new people, making new friends, and it helps keep things really exciting <laughs> to bring in new people regularly. Um, I do, I'm leaving some volunteer flyers if anybody's interested. Um, it's over there on the table and uh, we have a website or you can call me um, if you're interested in getting involved. Um, the future, um, our, our students and families um, are very special. I think um, different things, different aspects of our program speak to different people. Um, the focus a lot of times is on our students, but um, our families, they, um, they get a level of respite that allows them to work in the community, for them to manage their obligations, to, to rest, um, all those things that they need in their life, and all while knowing that their students are cared for and are safe. Um, and so that is something that we provide the community that really strengthens, I think, our community as a whole. Um, I think that uh, as we grow, uh, we're going to continue to need more support and, and need to get more awareness of our program out into the community and eventually one day we're going to need more space um, because uh, there's, there's just such a need. Um, so if you're interested in volunteering information over there. Um, we have a couple of really fun events that are already scheduled for 2023. Um, our Dreammaker Luncheon is our big annual fundraiser. If you're interested in that, we provide lunch. Um, you actually get to see our students perform and hear from a parent and that kind of thing in April. Um, we're putting on our second annual prom for students in June. And oh my goodness, this year it was just 
a night to remember. Um, this coming year, we're having it at a venue off-site at Silo Event Center, and so the students are gonna get all glammed up. We need lots and lots of volunteers to help make it safe. Uh, for our students, we really want to open it up community-wide to, to adults with IDD that don't even attend our program as well in June, so we'll have a big need for prom chaperones, and it's a great opportunity to get dressed up and maybe have a couple of dances with your loved ones, so uh, we would love for you to join us. Um, and that's all I have, um, but do you all have any questions for me? What are the Buzz. primary sources of financing your books? Absolutely. Okay, our financial um, income, our, our sources of income. So we are privately funded. Um, we don't receive government uh, funding. We uh, receive funding from foundations and contributions from individuals um, and through our special events. And then a portion of our funding comes from tuition. So our um, students and families pay um, a really affordable, we, we do our best to keep it really affordable, uh, rate of tuition, which is $4.75 an hour for in-person classes and $3.15 an hour for virtual classes. Um, and so this comes out to, um, this year, approximately 25% of the cost of their attendance, and we fundraise the rest. Um, and we also fundraise um, to build up a scholarship fund as well so that we can um, make sure that finances are not a barrier for any family. Um, and we offer up to full scholarships to attend our program. Yes, Kim. You did address the faith issue. I'm, I'm curious. I'm sure there's uh, Jewish, Buddhist, Hindi, uh, Muslim family. Yes. Yes. Fine. I just wondered how much contact you had from families in those faith, you know. How much involvement? Have you had some that just say, you know, the Jewish, mm -hmm. it's just too much Christianity? Yeah. We actually, we have had a recently a Jewish family that was like, we love this program so much, but we're just, we're Jewish, you know, so we're going to go do something else for a while, but it's so fun. Um, but we do have families that uh, really, really don't mind, and, um, and it's, uh, and I see these students coming, uh, these like Muslim students participating in worship and prayer time, and it's just a question that we ask these families as we're interviewing them during enrollment. Like, this is a part of the deal. You really have to be comfortable in this environment. We're not going to force anything. But um, so they, they, if they agree to that, then um, it's an opportunity for us to love on them. And, and it's great exposure for those of other faiths. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Linda. Um, when you're interactive, uh, if you're online, yeah. Is it interactive or is it, are they just watching it? Oh, that's a good question. So everybody is always curious about our online classes. I think online classes kind of got some bad buzz uh, over the pandemic. You know, it was really difficult for a lot of schools um, to transition to. But for us, um, we've created uh, a system where it is interactive, but um, our students that really, really thrive in the virtual classes are students often that struggle in person because of the sensory challenges of hearing all of these noises, all of these students talking and moving, the buzzing of the overhead lights, the air conditioning is really distracting to them, especially our autistic students. But in the virtual world, we can have just one person talking at a time. We're able to control the noise level. And so we find these students like really able to engage on a whole other level. Um, there's a chat function where they're able to type like throughout the class. They're able to speak one on one. And then we send home virtual boxes to all of our virtual students that have like little sticks that say like thumbs up, thumbs down, and has like little things to help them like interact with the, the class from wherever they're at as well. So we try to make it as interactive as possible. Yeah. What other questions do you have? 
Yeah. Is there a time when you would say, in a worship like this, I can't do something more? Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, especially because so many families were told that during school. Um, honestly, we don't, we just don't really think of it that way, you know, because some of our students are coming um, to Pathways strictly for the social component. Like, they're, they're whizzes at math, they read novels in their spare time. But because of their autism, they struggle with, with relationships. Um, and so it's just different for every student. We don't ever turn away a student because we feel like they're not progressing. Our primary goal is to help them retain what they've learned and worked so hard on um, to gain throughout their years of school. And if there's any growth on top of that, we celebrate that. You know? um, but retention is really our primary goal. Um, but we see so much growth. Um, but we have, um, like, people with Down syndrome, for example, um, have a higher likelihood to experience um, things like early onset dementia and similar um, things like that that um, can cause them to have significant regression um, while they attend our programs. And for us, we're there, we know them. We, uh, we can help them engage and interact and just be the best that they can be wherever they're at. Um, and that, that's our goal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say we have a board member, Ben Gray, in, uh, in the audience today. Um, <laughs> Ben is so great. He has served on our board for six years now. He's served as our treasurer, finance committee chair for many of those years, and just it, we're just so lucky and thankful to have people like Ben, volunteers that give so much of their time, whether they're directly with the students or they're in the background on the board or a committee. It means so much to us to have that level of community involvement. So thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ding. Okay, wasn't that interesting? <laughs> ben is also an Eagle Scout. She didn't mention that. <laughs> I've, no I've known him for a long time, too. Don't forget, we have a list of people to pray for up here. And if you know of anybody that needs extra prayers, just make sure I know who it is and we'll put them on the list. Take your, take your phone up here and take a picture so you have it for all week, okay? Return your name badges so we don't lose those. And have a wonderful week. <laughs>